Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cal State Fullerton virtual welcome session. And uh, we are prepared to talk, answer questions, chat, visit. Uh, yeah, we're flexible. Um, now we have Mike August here, and you only see his photo, but he's our one of our tech people behind the scenes. And then Anthony Alcane is running our Facebook. Um, Dr. Baker, hi, Dr. Hi. Baker. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yeah, Dr. Nicole Baker is our undergraduate uh, admissions coordinator. And I am Dr. Catherine Powers. I get to be the director of the School of Music. What a joy. It's fantastic. Um, now, I've noticed that from the from attendees oh good we've got some, some folks attending now and hoping that we also have some folks out there on facebook if you're on facebook go ahead and type your questions in and anthony will transfer them over here to the zoom panel so we can answer them dr Powers, um, i'm going to say one thing quickly as well yes. anthony alcane is also the recruitment assistant and he it can offer the uh even though he's mostly he's busy doing tech stuff today um, he is very happy to answer any questions about student life here. He's um, a sophomore, he's a flute performance major, and he is ready, willing, and able and excellent in answering student type questions about life here on campus. Great. Well, um, shall we get started, Nicole? Do you want to share? We have, uh, by the way, everyone, we have about 15, 20 minute presentation. And then we will have uh, plenty of time for questions or discussion or whatever you like. I think there's the, maybe 10 slides, so it's not too heavy duty. But it's meant to give um, a bit of overview to life as a music major and uh, a few details there. Um, great to be here. Uh, all of us miss seeing each other. We miss seeing our students. We miss making music. We miss being together. Uh, but it's so great to be able to do this. We have, by the way, um, the School of Music, Cal State Fullerton, has 22 full-time faculty. We have full-time faculty in all the areas, director of bands, brass performance, uh, string performance, director of orchestra, um, director of choir, music ed faculty, woodwind faculty. There we have them in all the major areas. And then we also have faculty, some part-time faculty who um, teach um, so that we have applied lessons on every instrument, oboe, bassoon, harp, organ, string bass, tuba, you name it, we have it. Um, and then we have faculty who teach uh, academic courses, concentration courses, music education, literature courses, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, you see here a slide that Nicole has brought us to. And this is uh, one slide on why Cal State Fullerton School of Music. We'll just wrap it up into one. On the left column, you see lots of uh, information about Cal State Fullerton itself. And the right column is specifics to the School of Music. Um, the data there on the left is from, uh, found at the uh, CSU Chancellor's Office website has this data, as well as the Cal State Fullerton um, website about us. So this is data straight off of reputable sources. By the way, Cal, um, Chancellor's Office. So. Cal State Fullerton is one of 23 campuses in the California State University system. Uh, we have the highest graduation rate in the CSU, meaning that a greater percentage of our students graduate in four years than at any other institution. Um, several years ago, Duke University, a research team there, uh, decided to investigate state universities versus private universities and to compare academic rigor I think they thought that they would see that uh, um, state universities would have maybe less academic rigor, but what they found out was that Cal State Fullerton was one of the United States' 25 academically most thorough or rigorous. It's a quality, great education, Cal State Fullerton. And we are number two this year in graduating underrepresented students. Many of our students come from all various walks of life. We have quite a diverse campus. We have quite a number of um, what we call first generation students, meaning that families did not have somebody who finished a college education. Um, 
and we serve them all very well. Uh, top 3% in best value around the country. This comes from Forbes magazine and Money magazine. Um, on the right, you'll see 100% job placement amongst our music ed credential students. So students who finish music ed, finish the credential, 100% uh, placement into jobs immediately thereafter. Performance majors likewise have excellent uh, career internship opportunities, graduate school, they all move on to something meaningful in their lives, the next step in their lives. Award-winning ensembles uh, in all areas, large ensembles, small. Many of ensembles go on tour. The choir went to Spain last year. Um, our wind band, top band, went to the CPDNA conference, one of eight chosen in the country to go, and only the uh, second such in the state of California in decades. The other one was USC. <laughs> Great. But um, amidst all of that, we have a supportive family-like atmosphere. So 380 music majors, 70 faculty, and yet the students will tell you over and over again that they feel that they're part of a family. They feel that they belong, they connect, they have friends, people that they can talk to, hang out with, people that they will know for years and years after they graduate. There's a sense that they belong, that they know people, the faculty know, the students, the students know the faculty. Many of our classes are very small. And because of this um, constant, uh, friendly, supportive interaction, students get regular mentoring and regular advising. Nicole, do you want to? Okay, thanks. Um, so a little bit about life as a music major. So we're, we're going to talk about the curriculum here, which are the courses that students take. Um, types of courses that students take is includes how music is put together, how it's constructed, um, its history, its composition, what it means, like the aesthetics of music, what is music, what is its purpose, what is a piece of music in particular trying to do, and then as well as the performance side, so becoming a better musician. Clearly we have courses in performance. There's the applied lessons, one-on-one -on -one lessons with your um, private instructor every single week, and then we have the major performance ensemble and small ensembles as well. Then besides that, there are uh, specialty classes, concentration classes, pedagogy classes, um, literature classes, conducting class, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's the essence of the music major curriculum. Um, how do students know about the curriculum? Well, like I said, there were uh, plenty of opportunities for advising. Um, the students have uh, advising at least once a semester. There's an advising period. We just are about to finish it for the fall uh, course selection. Um, so you have a faculty advisor and then there are advising roadmaps and course lists. So students, it's really clear what students would take next semester, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Next slide, Nicole. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I already mentioned that every music major has a faculty advisor assigned to them and they have advising official advising for next semester's courses. You have that once a semester right when um, scheduling starts. Obviously every music major has their applied instructor, their private teacher that they see weekly and the major performance ensemble directors. So there are multiple faculty that the student is interacting with. The faculty are watching out for the student, are encouraging the student, mentoring, uh, supporting the student and teaching the student. Um, rhythm of daily life. So uh, the music major life we have organized in the mornings to have our classes, our academic classes, theory, history, specialization courses, in the afternoons, the major performance ensembles meet, band, orchestra, choirs. Um, also students take GE classes on the alternate days. In the evenings, um, small ensembles, um, uh, yeah. Plus obviously practice, lessons, private lessons, um, study, et cetera, work perhaps, yeah. Uh, opportunities at the in the School of Music. Uh, a number of them, I just mentioned six here um, in the uh, upper left corner is School of Music cheap tickets. So you get a sticker put on your student um, ID card and you can take it 
and get redu highly reduced tickets in various um, venues. And then merit scholarships. So um, um, merit scholarships. So these are scholarships that are based on how well, how, um, say GPA or performance, that kind of thing. There are scholarships all over campus and we have scholarships in the College of the Arts. The application deadline is normally uh, March 1st or this year is March 2nd. So the earliest days in March is the application deadline. Um, small ensembles, we have small ensembles. We have jazz combos, new music ensemble, Collegium Musicum that plays on Renaissance instruments and music from long ago, Baroque music, Renaissance music. Um, we have a jazz vocal choir. We have, um, gosh, saxophone quartets, percussion ensembles, on and on and on and on. Opera, I mean, it's so many different opportunities for students to play. And other kinds of performance opportunities include the Tuesday recital series. So almost every Tuesday, not quite, about a month into the semester, we start our regular recital series and students can sign up and they can go there and play their piece they're working on with their applied instructor, or they can play a piece that they're going to um, play on a recital later, or that they're gonna play for competition or whatever they're working on, they can come and perform and, and take their performance out kind of for a test drive and, and try it out. Um, jobs on campus in the College of the Arts. There's a few jobs in the School of Music. Most of our School of Music jobs are related to production, to concert production. Um, and obviously social media. So we have Facebook, we have um, Instagram, we have um, Twitter and very active there. We ha even have a full-time person who does our social media for the College of the Arts. So he's busy. Um, more opportunities are in the music clubs and in the service fraternities. So here we, I've listed nine of them. There are uh, more than that, but you can see Saxophone Alliance, Titan Brass Club, Clarinet Concert Club, Musicology Club, um, the um, American Choral Directors Association, ACDA, uh, NAFME, which is the National Association for Music Education. And then on the left column, you see Phi Mu Alpha, Sigma, Iota, uh, Sigma Alpha Iota, Phi Mu Epsilon. Those three fraternities are service groups. They um, have, first of all, they have a really great time together, meeting together regularly. They do a lot of fun stuff together. But one of the most important things for them is service, meaning that they do good works in the community and in the School of Music. Sometimes they organize our band festivals or choir festivals, et cetera, where they help organize them, they help organize Welcome Day, they help organize some of our convocations, um, orientations, so um, they're very active. It's a great social experience. Next. <laughs> So next. Yeah, slide. I was gonna just break in. Um, one yes. thing about the, the three social uh, fraternity or the service fraternities, they mm -hmm. also offer some uh, opportunities for scholarships as well. That's and, true. Yes, and so, uh, so in, in addition, and they're award winning, and because we have an award, we have award winning number of chapters, a lot of our students do actually really well in getting national scholarships. So just wanted to chime in there because I know that everybody, is looking for more money at this point. Good, great, great point, Dr. Baker. They, um, they were, one thing that popped in my mind is that one of the fraternities was doing um, free theory tutoring. So they, they serve in, in multiple ways, um, but they're connected, working, networking with the, um, all the students in the School of Music. Uh, oh, resources. So these are some of the resources in the College of the Arts and in around the university to support academics so that students are successful and feel supported, feel like they know what they're going to do and they have assistance to help if they feel they need it. So we have a student success center that's for the College of the Arts students, uh, meaning not only music, but also theater, visual art, dance. Um, what you find there is space to sit and study if you want, you can use computers if you want, um, talk to an advisor, they've got a couple of advisors that are students, so it's kind of peer, you know, insider information of what it's like and what you should be doing or tricks or advice. Um, and they have some staff advisors that will make sure you take the right courses and that you're 
doing, um, going through your college education in a very effective way. The University Learning Center is, um, is free tutoring for GE, mostly GE tutoring. Um, Writing Center, as you can imagine, uh, it's run by the English department. It offers free assistance in writing. So if you have to write a term paper, you can go over there and make an appointment and they'll give you some advice if you like. Uh, Academic Advisement Center is also on campus. It's for GE advising. Um, Tuffy, Tuffy's Basic Needs uh, was founded about two, I think, two, three years ago. Uh, and it is a level of support if you just, if students just suddenly find themselves like uh, without any cash, gee, I'm hungry and I'm, I'm, I'm just not having enough income right now for food, can you help me out? Or toiletries, so they have free stuff to give away. Um, I've heard of students who um, just were, you know, short on cash and they needed to go and do an interview for an internship or something. So they offered them some clothing. It's just a, a really like a, like a safety net in case things aren't going right. Um, Titan Student Union is, is like most student yeah. unions on any campus. There's food you can buy. There's, um, there's a billiards or pool, uh, bowling. Uh, so lots of fun things. Okay. Ah, Nicole. Hi there. So um, uh, this is the uh, this is the nuts and bolts moment of the day. This is what it has to is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. First of all, we understand that financial aid the financial aid office has started sending out its awards. Um, it takes some time. Give it some time. But uh, they are now starting to roll out. Uh, May first is your first big hard deadline. First of all, you've got a bunch of different things to do. First of all, if you uh, if you first of all you want to accept uh, your your offer at the School of Music. So, in other words, you email it, your coordinator, the person for whom you auditioned. Uh, you accept the admission to the School of Music, and you also accept a scholarship if you were offered that. So, look at the letters that you've been getting from the various people. And so if, you want, if you want to know who to accept the admission from, uh, you look for the various letters that you've gotten from the School of Music. And for example, if you're a voice major, you've gotten emails from Dr. Goodrich, you'll write him back and say, hey, I'm coming. If you got emails from Dr. Barr, you write him back and say, I'm coming. If you got a scholarship offer, you need to, need to accept it by May 1st as well. Now, let's turn to the university side of things. What you need to do, is of course it accept the admissions offer and you take you first say yes I'm coming you also pay that all-important uh, deposit and the third thing is is that you have to sign up for a new student orientation if you're a freshman you'll sign up for new student orientation if you're a transfer you will sign up for transfer student orientation this year everything is online you still have to sign up by May 1st. Um, and then finally, July 15th is your red letter day for you to get all of your final, your, I'm sorry, your final transcripts in. So your high schools and your community colleges will need to get your transcripts in. So these are pretty hard and fast deadlines. Um, now I do have to mention something. That if you don't do it by May 1st, you will, you, you stand a very strong chance of getting your admissions rescinded, especially that orientation sign up. So again, May 1st is your red letter date. Um, so what you're gonna do over the summer. Oh, Dr. Powers. One, one quick thing. Um, I'm told that uh, about 30% um, of the students who get financial aid through the financial aid office will be asked to verify um, the, their FAFSA, and so they'll be asked to submit some uh, extra documents, 30%. So if you would please, uh, when you get your award, check to see, um, do you need to submit some other documents or your parents need to submit documents, that kind of thing, and be sure you always check your student portal for information on your to-do list, to-do list. Um, and then I also heard one thing today, our president had a town hall, President uh, Virgie, 
at Cal State Fullerton. And the um, Vice President for Student Affairs mentioned that if students were accepting their admission and had to pay their deposit but didn't have the money to pay it, that there was a possibility for having an extension to pay the deposit. So if you're listening right now, and if that's you, then, um, then what I'd su suggest is watch carefully when you accept your admission, if it says anything about that, about delaying the payment of the deposit. Um, or if you have any questions, if you want to email me, um, Dr. Powers, that's kpowers at fullerton.edu, and I can also look into it for you. Um, however, if, if when you accept your admission, if you have financial aid, you actually won't have to pay the deposit. Um, I see our first question, um, and it, which is a good one. What do we do afterwards? Which when will we know when we can register for courses and how will we know which courses would be best to add? Uh, that's going to be coming on down the line. Your orientation, of course, is about that. Also, I do have to say one thing that is unique about Cal State Fullerton. I don't know of any other school that mentors you quite as much through the program as Cal State Fullerton. You will have advisement before school starts. You will have advisement every semester. And yes, that advisor will look at your at your at your study plan and tell you exactly what you need to take to get through. So this will happen all throughout. And actually, I'm going to answer a question that happens all the time. I'm going to answer about three or four in a row. And Dr. Powers, please chime in. Um, the first thing is, what is this pre-music thing that I got accepted for? That's a transition. <laughs> you know, ignore that. That's the yeah. bottom line. I wish I could write on every acceptance. Dr. Paris, we might have to send out an email to everybody. Ignore it. It is an administrative status that will be fixed probably right around May 1st or around that time. Wouldn't you think that's about it? That's, you know, in other words, when all of, all of the admission stuff is over, and we talk to admissions, you will become music majors and, and we will take care of it. it all people right now are pre-music. Now, the other thing is- Let me, let me, add, oh, yeah. let me add something, that's okay. Uh, see, Cal State, Cal State Apply, which is the platform that you applied uh, to Cal State Fullerton through, Cal State Apply put you into this pre-music status because everybody has to play an audition to become a music major. Uh, and then, it's just a transitory status, like Dr. Baker said. And then right now, during these next few days, um, you'll see that your, your status has changed to your real major, whether it's Bachelor of Arts, Music Education, or Bachelor of Music Performance, or whatever it is, you'll see it switch. But you are a music major. If you've been accepted, you had auditioned, you were accepted into the music um, School of Music, you're a music major. So like Dr. Baker said, don't worry about it. The other thing is, I'm going to ask, answer about three questions, and of course, Dr. Paris, please, please uh, chime in. The second thing is, is I'm a BM. How come it says BA? Well, at this point, everybody's BA. Once you get to Cal State Fullerton, we do sort that out very quickly. And may I just add, and this is one of my favorite things to say, let's say you become a BA in music ed. You will be held to the same standards as bachelors of music. And there are no second class citizens at Cal State Fullerton. And other, I hate to say it, other music departments, there is. But it, with us, everybody is in the same boat. You are all held to the same standards, no matter what you do. But, and also I have to say one other thing, a lot of people want to be composers and you work with a composition faculty once you get here. So one of the things that does make Cal State Fullerton special is that not only do you work with an advisor every semester, but you have access to all of the people who are involved in whether or not you wanna become composition or, or music history or performance or music ed. You have constant access to all of them and they will be part of your daily life. This is not a school where you have professors in some remote ivory tower and you spend your entire time working with people who are like five or six steps away. There's a pretty good chance that you're gonna meet the head of our composition area 
pretty quickly after you start Cal State Fullerton. Ditto for music history and all of it. You will be meeting, you'll be, I'll be teaching you. So, you know, here we are. So you always will have an open sort of channel to talk to people. One of the things that I think really sets us apart is that actually you have pretty good access to everyone you need access to. And so that's one of the things that really does set us apart. A lot of you will ask, I know you're gonna ask, can I double major in performance and music education? Officially, no. But course-wise, you bet. So in other words, let's say you can't decide whether or not you wanna be performance or music ed. You might wanna teach, but you're not sure. What we will do is, first of all, the first year or so, everybody takes basically a lot of the same stuff if you're a freshman. Transfers, not so much, because you're already specializing. But the deal is, is what happens, is that a lot of people choose to take all of the, they major in performance, but they choose to also incorporate into their curriculum music education classes. So that if, it, if you actually decide you want to go into the credential program, you'll be able to do it. Um, your, your piece of paper won't say music ed and music performance, but you will have the ability. Isn't that correct, Dr. Powers? That's right. In fact, um, the admissions and the records office, the registrar's office on campus, um, actually won't allow the, uh, a student to have, be a sort of double, you know, like get the degree music ed and the degree music performance, um, because the degrees are so, so similar. But what many of our music performance students do is they, they follow music performance, they're officially bachelor of music in performance, and then they take the few, the few music ed classes along the way. Then when they finish, if they want, they can go to the credential or they can wait and do the credential later. Um, they have that flexibility to decide. So I think that's all I'm really thinking about in terms of serious questions that I have to answer. But let's go through this slide. Oops, before I do, oops, I just did something terrible to my slides. And they were lovely slides here. Um, I'm gonna go back to, he go down to here. And Dr. Powers and I will kind of walk you through this. New st student orientation again, again, is going to be online. Um, normally it does happen on campus, but it will happen online this year, uh, this summer. Um, now. No one wants school to open up and be live more than Dr. Powers and me. <laughs> so we're going to pretend that yes, that's going to happen because I think there's a good chance. Let's, we're gonna think positive. So placement tests for theory and piano will happen uh, but probably in the week or two before school starts. Stay tuned. Um, and also when um, placement auditions for major performance ensembles. Um, generally what we do is we direct people to email for specifics like repertoire and things like that. Email um, our, the head of our choral area, which is Robert Eistad, or the head of our, our orchestra is Professor Furumoto and Dr. Paris. And I'm gonna finish one more and then turn it over to Dr. Paris and the director of our concert bands, uh, Dr. Barr. And all of this is on our website and they will give you repertoire and will also have information on auditions. Take it away, Dr. Powers. I was going to say that Dr. Eistead and Dr. Barr uh, have mentioned that they will be contacting you so they know what instrument everybody plays or voice. So they know what major performance ensemble, um, what type of ensemble you probably be in. And so you'll hear from them. You don't need to email them. You can wait. Uh, they will email you probably, I think, June or July, and they'll describe to you what the audition process will be like. Um, they do a lot of online or they get listen to tapes and things. In the vocal area, it's normally done live, uh, the auditions. Um, now, looking at the slide here, um, the last one you see, New Student Day for Music Majors. So that's uh, normally when the um, voice area listens to um, the students, the brand new students, so they can audition into, you know, which choir you're going to be in. They also do, um, they just do a, a voice check to decide which, uh, which faculty member will be your, uh, your private teacher. So they'll do that then. That's normal. Um, let's see. 
backing up, I'm going to go to the top here of the slide, new student orientation. Like Dr. Baker said, we normally do most of this in person. Um, in the past, we've done some transfer student orientations virtually or online. Uh, but now this summer, we're going to have to do the freshman um, orientation online. It, it will be um, uh, my job to let you know what classes to enroll for to help you get enrolled in your music major classes for fall. Um, so I don't have a lot of detail about how we're going to do that yet but soon we'll let you know. I've saved sections of classes for you to enroll in. Uh, music 111 is an obvious class for every freshman. Music 121 for every freshman. Um, and then transfer students uh, will work together you, uh, with you on what you should enroll for fall. But we're expecting you and we're waiting for you and we have the classes for you. Um, now the second bullet here, placement tests. So let me explain that. Piano. If you are a piano major and piano is your primary instrument, you um, don't need to concern yourself with this at all because you're, you're good. But if piano is not your major instrument, if you play no piano at all, no problem. We have three courses to help you learn to play a little bit of piano. If you already play some piano, then what you should do is take the piano placement test so we put you into the right semester of piano. As you know, it's a, a requirement nationally for everyone who is a music major and gets a music degree to have a little bit of piano uh, skills. And we do that in three semesters of class piano. Um, so theory. Now, the theory, music theory, uh, is taught in, um, in a lot of different ways around the country. There isn't a national standard in how to teach theory. There isn't one common textbook or textbook type on how to teach theory. Uh, so every university, therefore, has uh, the right uh, to choose the method that they uh, think works best. And so theory is taught around the country in many different ways. Therefore, when students transfer over to us, when they're transfer students, we have to check where they stand in their theory knowledge. And that's what the placement tests are, is to check where you stand so we can understand best what theory class you should go into next. Uh, I don't know when the theory tests will be. Frankly, I'm very sorry. Um, none of us expected the situation that we're in right now. Last year, we held the theory placement tests in July and August, and I'm sure that's what we wanted to do this time. Uh, but um, we will contact you more with information about how we're going to do that. We'll probably do it online. I'm not sure, but we will devise a system and contact each and every one of you to tell you about how that will work. If um, you're a freshman though, you don't need to worry about any theory placement tests. You'll just take, of course, freshman theory. So any questions? Any other questions? Any questions from Facebook? No, I think we got them. Great. Dr. Baker, anything else? I mean, I was gonna. Uh, I was thinking going through the, because uh, just in case anybody signs on now, um, mm -hmm. just looking over all of this, it's a full day. One of the things that I think is important about the daily life at Cal State Fullerton, and I don't know if you've spoken to anybody on campus yet, is how supportive everyone is of each other, and uh, you of course have a lot of. Well, I mean, all of you are adults, but you'll have older adult supervision throughout the whole thing because you have very close relationships with your teachers. This is not a place where your teachers don't know who you are. We all know who you are. We all know your names probably by, you know, a week into classes. Our classes are generally not very large and you're not going to take theory in a class with 200 other people. So we will know you. But, and of course you have your private instructor and you also have your advisor. But students, it's a very supportive atmosphere. And I've taught at Cal State Fullerton since 1997. And I saw it the first day I walked in. And uh, that, the, that the students are incredibly supportive. The names change, the faces change. The attitude is always the same. I've taught in several other universities that will go nameless. 
And I've never had, a, I've never seen a student body like this. Everybody's in a good mood. And I think it's partly because the faculty all gets along with each other and we're all on your side. And I think that really helps. And I think that's an important aspect of daily life. Um, and we're very supportive of our students. Um, I'm going to just go through, I, I don't, I think, when we say cheap tickets, I do want to amplify this. Oh wait, Dr. Powers. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt him. If you want to talk about cheap tickets, but um, um, it came up a question about housing on and off campus. And um, maybe Anthony could chime in also, but I was going to say is that unlike many universities, even in California, where it's not really um, safe to live near campus, at Cal State Fullerton, it is safe to live near yes. campus. There are a lot of apartments for rent around campus, um, all like just right across the street from campus or half a mile away or even a mile away. So there's housing right around campus. I know students who don't even have a car. They come from a foreign, another country and so they're you know trying to keep the cost down. They don't even have a car. Um, there is on-campus housing. Um, and if you're interested in that, I would suggest that you go to the Fullerton uh, website. So fullerton.edu website. And in the top right box, type housing into the search box. And you'll see that we have um, housing. Um, they probably places left. I, I know that students often sign up early for housing, but my understanding is that there are places left in the university housing if you're interested in that. I will say that a lot of students uh, uh, get together and share apartments. They meet up in music. So many of the music majors are sharing apartments with other music majors, um, not very living, living not very far away, and they might carpool together or ride a bike. Or um, does Anthony want to say anything more about um, housing? Yeah, I can. Um, I can chime into that. Um, I live off campus with uh, four other music majors. So right now we're all stuck in our apartment together. Um, and living with other music majors allows us, um, allow us to carpool to concerts and carpool to school really. Um, and it also helps because we all know we have to practice. So, <laughs> um, so we don't bug each other whenever we have to practice our instruments or practice piano and stuff. That's great. Can I ask a question for you? Do you know anybody who's ever lived on the arts floor? Yeah, yeah. A lot of um, my class of freshmen um, lived on the arts floor. Um, I think it was Juniper. Um, but yeah, it was, it, there's a, I believe a practice room. Um, in that dorm so yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> how long do they last there once. How, do, how long do they last in all the drama of an arts floor <laughs> <laughs> um i didn't hear much about that but um it seems like they all got along with each other okay. and they ended up um a lot of people ended up moving off campus and yeah. keeping the same roommates so yeah. It seems to me that a lot of people stay in the dorms for one year and then they move out. Yeah. Um, I always think just the idea of an arts floor is you open up your door to run down to the bathroom and suddenly see a ballerina careening down the hallway. <laughs> that, that always cracks. It's just the, the concept. Um, so um, also, I do want to mention there are several apartment buildings directly south, uh, right across the street from campus. And they've changed names. A university, uh, I forgot what they're called. Nutwood East is one of them. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody once called those the music, the, the de facto music dorms. So many people live there. Well, yeah. it, it is very typical in terms of housing for students to hang out to, to sort of uh, the first semester or two, they might be in a dorm room or something else, and then they end up getting roommates, and that's not an issue. Um, I'm going to actually answer one little, uh, it's my favorite question of the day because it's so important. Um, it came over in the chat, and it said, one, we've been asked, so all we need to do as of now is to accept our admission to the university, accept our financial package, pick our orientation date, and email our coordinator that we're coming. Yes. 
and then we'll take care of the rest. Hang back and wait for more emails. We're really good at about emailing you, as you found out, and you will get many more. So yes, that's what you need to know. So, and watch, watch your to-do list in your student portal in case financial aid uh, you know, needs verification of documents or just anything comes up from the university side, not the School of Music side, but the university side. If something else comes up, it'll be in your to-do list in your portal. Great. Any other questions for us? You're all so quiet. Well, I have to say it's really, truly wonderful to, um, even though I'm not seeing everybody's face, but to feel like I've met some new people, some new students who are coming in fall. It's really exciting uh, to meet you. Um, as we've said before, it is a, really a lot like family. Um, the students, the faculty, I just really, this energy that comes in the School of Music. Um, the, the faculty, I should probably also mention, that there are universities and departments of music where the faculty don't all get along very well necessarily. They're kind of like cliques of faculty and, you know. Factions. Even kind of like maybe cliques, like if you're in this group, okay, whether you're better than that group. We don't have any of that crap. Sorry. We don't have any of that. It is, we are all supportive of each other. We, uh, we have high standards. Uh, we're all trying to get there but we're gonna support each other on our way. So it may feel a little competitive in a sense, but it's a really healthy com competition. And in the faculty, it's just truly, really, really supportive. And I, I mean, I got my degree at a place where that didn't happen and it really affects the students. It affected my career. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it, of course. And it's funny because then they, they said, well, there was a job opening and they asked me if I wanted to apply and I didn't. <laughs> so, I mean, it happens, I, it, you know, but that's very true. But it does filter down to the students. I mean, I have no idea. And, and I've taught a lot of different places, but there's something particularly special. And one of the things about a CSU in general is that there is a special focus on teaching. Uh, more than if you went to a you know, four-year private school somewhere w that is focused on research. And actually, at some of those places, they hardly teach. And, but at Cal State Fullerton, our focus is on teaching, very much so. Well, if you have um, any other questions that come up after this, and you feel like emailing Dr. Baker or emailing me, we welcome your emails. We look forward, as I mentioned, to meeting you. But in the meantime, here in spring and summer, um, absolutely, you know, if you think of something later, please uh, email, email us. Please do. Ah, um, question we have over. Another, Anthony, question. come on back. <laughs> so uh, this is a housing question, but I'm going to mention it. Uh, if there are no spots in dorms, are there any advisors who can help me live on campus? or find a place just off campus. I'm gonna mention a couple of resources that, uh, that I know about, and then I'm gonna turn this actually over to Anthony, um, which is that first of all, um, there are housing advisors, there's a housing office that you can, um, I, I know you can at least email and call, and I, my understanding is, is that if you call it, you actually get people at their house, at the, you know, the housing officials, it goes directly to their home. I do understand that. So if you call somebody, you'll either get an immediate call back or whatever, but there are housing offices. Go to the housing, um, housing office uh, website through Cal State Fullerton. The second thing, which is very helpful. Oh yeah. I also, I also think that Facebook, right. so if you want to connect mm -hmm. with other students, hey, is somebody looking for a roommate, you know, uh, maybe somebody graduated, they have a space open in their house. I think that Facebook, the social media is a great place to go. And the website on Facebook is called CSUF Housing. And that, and so if you type into the search line, CSUF Housing, you will get lots of, uh, you'll get onto a page. I believe there are three separate pages, but you will get, uh, that's where you go. Anthony, any insight? Yeah, um, I, um, I looked, first of all, on the CSUF roommates page to find anybody looking for um, roommates or anyone to um, apply for apartments with. And that was what I did in my first semester. And then I ended up found, finding housing through um, 
like friends from there. And then um, later on, I found friends in the school music and we basically teamed up together and um, applied for an apartment to live in together. And another thing that I would suggest doing, you can um, try contacting um, the school music Facebook like um, through Messenger. Um, I know of right now five people looking for um, for roommates or, and a place to live and I can um, connect you with them. Um, and I know Jason will know a few people and so will Mike. Um, we're all people that look through the school music um, Facebook page and stuff like that. Um, with regards to cost of living on um, off campus, um, for rent, I pay about 450 um, including um, my utilities. So that's um, basically a steal. <laughs> um, again, I do live with a roommate, but um, it really benefits me overall because I can, um, I can carpool with them to school and we share a lot of things. So it's, yeah, it really cuts down in price and it's fun overall. <clears throat> Um, there's a question about jobs. Um, I think I could answer that because um, I have two jobs through the school of music, actually. Um, I'm the school of music student, undergraduate student recruitment assistant, and I am also um, Professor Ferrandis's um, uh, assistant for the flute studio. Um, I found those jobs just asking around um, and talking to different faculty members. They'll have posters and little flyers all over the school music. Um, and there are a lot of jobs in the, the Titan Student Union. I know at the beginning of the semester, they're always looking for um, assistance in the library. The Career Center is a great resource to find those jobs. Um, yeah. With the uh, Titan Connect, the Career Center has an online tool that um, offices around campus will advertise openings. It's called Titan Connect. So you go there, you make a, a little account, and um, then anyway, so then they have um, share with you job possibilities. It's not every job on campus because the offices don't have to post on Titan Connect, but there's a lot of them there. And then um, besides that, I think Anthony's advice was really good about say, just going to the library, do you have any openings? Or going over to the food service and asking there. Um, one thing I have to mention that I, um, I, I realized I was talking with while I was muted. Um, I have put in the chat of the website about, first of all, the idea of Titan Connect. Also check the chat, everybody, for, for, for the website for housing. Um, now, Anthony, I'm, I'm going to uh, answer one, uh, one more, uh, ask you about one more question about living off campus. What is okay. the estimated cost of living off campus? We've been asked that. Yeah, um, last semester, I no, um, last year, actually, I lived on my own and I spent about $600 in rent and utilities every month and um, for, groceries i say about like 200 a month um maybe more maybe less depending um on your situation but i i think around 800 900 dollars a month is a good ballpark range um to, for overall cost of living including housing inclu including gas um utilities um all of that from Facebook, we got a question. When will we be able to join clubs and fraternities, et cetera? Is it some form of a club rush once school starts? Well, it's not quite like that. I'm the uh, advisor for our nationally award-winning Mu Phi Epsilon chapter. And um, we have rush events. Actually, we don't really start doing that until about the first three or four weeks into the semester. Um, and we start doing our first socials. And I think that's pretty typical, Anthony, isn't it? The yeah. first socials kind of start in about midway through sem the semester mm -hmm. and I'm, you through the semester. I'm one of, um, 
I lead one of the organizations in the school of music, uh, the, the Flute Society at Fullerton. So um, we do uh, this thing called Discover Fest every, every semester. Um, within the first two to three weeks of school, um, we have two days um, all, and all the organizations, um, the student organizations throughout campus, including the, um, the Greek life, we set up tables all over Titan Walk and the quad area um, with information booths for each organization. And that's really a great resource for finding clubs and organizations to join. And if you have a club in mind that you wanna start, um, feel free to contact um, the people at Student Life and Leadership. There's um, there's a few emails that you can contact online. Um, I don't have them off the top of my head, but um, just look up CSUF Student Life and Leadership. Yeah. Within the School of Music, though, it happens throughout the semester. And I've just put in the chat line, Student Life and Leadership. We're throwing a lot of info at you, so I thought it would be a good idea to write some <laughs> of this stuff down. Anthony, that's great. Thank you. We're about toward, near the, we're at the end of our, um, pretty much. If there are any questions, last minute questions, please. Um, no, the Q&A is quiet. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm going to put two, uh, three, e well, Anthony has already put his email address. I'm going to put kpowers at fullerton.edu and my email, at, oh, oh, it looks like your student life and leadership. Um, and also, <laughs> but, <laughs> oops, that's what, we're going to do that again. Email Dr. Powers about general questions and also my email, NBake, which you probably all know because I've only sent you 8,000 emails. That was my friend, the robot. Um, and some of them sent emails that we didn't know you got. So, um, so, and we do, but anyway, there you are. So if you need to reach out to either one of us, we're happy to help you. We hope we see you in the fall. This is, this has been a very interesting semester summer but i mean spring but we will be there in the fall god willing dr powers any parting words oh there was one a couple quick questions here let me answer those uh one person's asking about freshmen yes they're just auto placed into freshman theory you don't need to take a theory exam or anything like that and um your enrollment period well um they there is a campus office called Outreach and Orientation, and they're the ones who are organizing the summer's orientation. Uh, you know, as you know, it would normally already be organized, but with this particular situation we are in right now, they're still organizing it. So um, when you have your orientation, then it will be clear that you register. So probably you're going to register for classes probably in July, but it will occur at your orientation. That's why Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Meet you soon. Bye. Bye, all.